We're here with Chad Kennedy today from Kelly Williams and the Freedom Real Estate Group. Uh, we're just going to chat about uh, kind of the types of clients he likes working with uh, and has a lot of experience with, and that's the military community. Yeah. Um, so we'll start with why do you what what's kind of draws you to that group? Um, why do you like working with them? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I, well, being a United States Marine Corps veteran myself, I tend to bond well with those people. So um, having gone through the home buying process with an agent who wasn't that well versed with VA loans myself 10 years ago now, mm -hmm. when my wife and I purchased our first home, um, it was important to me to be a resource for those people. Um, I've mm -hmm. had not, I have an understanding of it. I've done the process myself as a buyer, many times as an agent, and then been through the refi process on my mm -hmm. own home as well. So um, it, there's a lot of features with the VA home loan that I think a lot of agents don't know about um, or benefits to using it. So if I can be a resource for those people, that's why I do it. Yeah, and I think not only that, but just knowing that it's out there. I don't, I don't know that um, a lot of people, uh, veterans, I think, you know, don't know that it's even there, you know? Absolutely. Um, I think that, what's the statistic, 13% of veterans actually use their VA home loan benefit, uh, which is quite a bit lower. Uh, look, I've looked at numbers on it. So the average veteran uses their GI Bill benefit or the post 9-11 GI Bill more specifically, if like only 48% of veterans use the education benefit. Um, and you know, when you're in the military, they talk about it, you know you get the benefit, but you don't really know what it means, what it does and all the benefits of it. They never really dive into that when you're in the process of out processing, getting out, or if you're still active. And so it's really something you have to do the research yourself for. It's not a huge thing that's promoted around the military community, yeah. at least from what I found when I was in. Is there a place they can go to find, you know, that information if they did, you know, if they've kind of since they've retired or whatever? Uh, yeah, I mean, the VA website has all that information on there. There's always contacts at the VA hospitals themselves um, or contact. There's usually a VA home buying specialist or, you know, an agent that does a lot of VA stuff in your area. So that yeah. would be an easy resource. Uh, yeah, they obviously could contact they, you. Yeah, <laughs> through my website or on the phone, absolutely. Um, and we'll post a link to, to the VA website and, and those areas in the comments here. Um, why do you think that if, if a lot, of, I think it's a statistic is 80% of uh, military veterans or active people have purchased a home, but only 13% of them are using uh, uh, the VA loan. What, why would you say that is the case? You know, that's a really good question. I think a lot of it comes down to where they're at in life right now. Um, the VA loan has great options, zero down, uh, everything like that. You know, if you're above 40% disability, there's no funding fee, anything like that. You don't have to pay principal mortgage insurance. I think it's a great option, but it really just depends on where they're at in life. I, we're looking at veterans and there's a vast majority of veterans out there from World War II, Vietnam, um, the Gulf War, Operation Iraqi Freedom, Enduring Freedom. And I think we're seeing more veterans from OIF, OEF using the VA home loan benefit to purchase their first home. But after they use it one time, I think a lot of people don't know that they can reuse it again. Mm -hmm. They're eligible Absolutely. to reuse that yeah. again. And then they're taking that equity from their house and doing a conventional loan or something else down okay. the road. So, but it is available more than one time. Right. Absolutely. And have you noticed, um, you know, one of the things that we're, you know, I, I, we're trained to do is, hey, are you a veteran and are you available or do you know that this is available for you? Um, are people asking that other people out there that you're run into? Um, is that question being asked of every person when they're doing a home loan? I don't think it's being asked of every person when they're doing a home loan, no. Um, I think it comes down, if it comes up in financial documents, you know, if they're still actively in the military, I obviously think it's going to be addressed at that point. But as many veterans as we have out there in the community right now um, that are entering the market as buyers, if they don't bring it up, I think that a lot of time, at times it's going missed and they might be pushed into one of the first time home buyer programs or something like that because of it. Yeah, that's a shame. Um, and, and I think the other thing we kind of run into with with the veteran community is maybe the you know the offers getting accepted um i've run into this a few times in the past year or so especially now with the market the way it is that um well a va loan is not going to be accepted um what are some 
what are some of the things you're hearing from listing agents um, in terms of why they say they're not good? And let's kind of discuss those and kind of go over yeah, those. Um, I think one of them is the requirements for a VA loan. So no flaking paint, no peeling shingles, you know, stuff like that. A lot of people are talking about the strapped hot water heaters right now for the earthquakes um, that mm -hmm. we get here in Spokane. Uh, but stuff that comes up on the appraisal process with it, I think they dive in a lot more. So, and then I, I think zero down really comes into play too in the market right. that we're seeing. So there's nothing we can do about the zero down option unless they have cash to put down. I still think even with a zero down option on a VA loan, that that's a very solid offer. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think a lot of people are shying away from it because the zero down, if you're looking at a conventional loan with, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20% down up front, if anything came back in this market with the appraisal process, then, you know, they have the cash to push through where a VA deal, if it was zero down and we couldn't come to an agreement out, if an appraise, house didn't appraise, then, you know, we're moving on to something else and the house goes back on the market. So, yeah, I think, uh, you know, it kind of gets a bad rap because it's zero down and, you know, kind of gets put into this like down payment assistance, no money. Um, when statistically that's, you know, it's not the case. The credit scores are usually higher. Uh, getting loans through is usually a little bit easier. Absolutely. Um, you know, the appraisal is an issue, but you know, you, ha you have the, the Tidewater thing and the reconsideration of value. And obviously there's, there's a few standards. Um, you know, but th those are things that we can fix and we can help get veterans in more homes. And Absolutely. And then the requirements on the veterans as well is a little looser than you know, as far as right. debt to income is concerned. Um, it's pretty solid where if you've got somebody that's on that line at, you know, 30% on an FHA or conventional loan as far as debt to income, like that can be tough where I've the highest VA I've heard was, went at 51% and it was a relocation and the spouse didn't have a job lined up yet. Um, and obviously as soon as she started working there, it'd be back down to that 30%. But um, it's pretty solid. I haven't had one re rejected, um, right. you know, because of credit reasons or anything like that. I've, I've pushed quite a few of them through last year. Yeah, I think it's, you know, the reality is, is if there, you know, there's a difference between being eligible and being qualified. Absolutely. Um, and you know, the first you got to be eligible, and then once you get through the qualification, the the qualification portion of it uh, can be a little bit easier than those other loans. And I think that's um, it's good for a lot of reasons, and and uh, it it allows that opportunity for people to to get in homes. Um, and with those challenges out there, because there those we hear those all the time. What what are you doing to help, or what are some strategies that need to be used to get uh, more offers accepted for some of these veterans? I think it comes to writing a complete offer. Um, you know, a lot of times with what I see come through on my listings, you know, we're seeing sloppy offers. Not everything's in there. They're playing follow-up. But a nice completed offer by your agent, I think, helps a lot with, mm -hmm. you know, an inspection addendum, title, everything else that you're going to have included in that offer. And having it be complete um, shows really where you're at. Uh, it's tough with homes going, what, 25% of homes last year, I think, Zillow reported went above asking price mm -hmm. so just make it making sure that the house is within value doing a great comparative market analysis to make sure that right. that offer the house we're writing the offer on is actually going to appraise at value to our best guess yeah um is important and then getting out and looking at the homes obviously you've got to be proactive in this market it doesn't matter what kind of loan process you're you're doing conventional cash fha um, you have to be out looking at homes to get your offer accepted so mm -hmm. I think that's key. And is there something in the the negotiation process that you've done that's helped in terms of like, hey, my buyer is a VA buyer. This is why he she is better than. We've done some, um, and I, it's probably about fifty percent that it actually works. But we've done some notes from the buyer to the seller. Mm -hmm. You know, military family, we're relocating to Fairchild Air Force Base in Spokane, Washington. You know, we love your home. Thank you for letting us view it. You know, we can mm -hmm. see our family growing here in the future type thing. And sometimes you can connect and tug on the heartstrings that way because and maybe push your offer through. Um, but I find just having a clean offer has pushed my clients ahead of the line from an agent that maybe didn't have such a clean offer written. So mm -hmm. it wasn't going 10 grand above asking asking price like I've heard crazy things like that lately and yeah. I don't think you have to do that to get your offer accepted even in yeah. today's market right. you just have to be competitive 
Right, right. Um, you know, one thing we've done is write a letter explaining kind of the VA loans to, to the sellers and yeah. kind of dispelling some of those myths. And I think that helps uh, just because, you know, the, the rumors are out there and, and I, they're not, not all of them are true. You Absolutely. know, some of them are, but um, you do your best and I think you do a good job. It seems like, you know, in the transactions we've done together that, that offers are getting accepted because you, you understand the process and are able to, I think it needs to be explained to everybody is the big Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people that have misconceptions about the VA loan, like you said, and it's it's actually a really solid loan. And, you know, if I'm the listing agent and I'm looking at offers, a VA offer, obviously I can't say it takes priority over that, but I don't shy away from it when right. explaining it to my sellers and on how solid it is, you know, mm -hmm. as far as worrying about getting through to closing, which is their ultimate goal. So. What are the what are some of the challenges that you think a uh, VA loan type buyer, uh, military buyer faces as, you know, in buying homes, what are some of the basic kind of things you think they face? I think it comes down to the home requirements. So, and I think VA and FHA kind of fall into that same note with knob and tube, stuff like that. I think a lot of agents will look at a home when they list it and not necessarily know the requirements for VA or FHA. Mm -hmm. So they just put it down as cash or conventional on the multiple listing service. Well, that's taking out a whole section of buyers that could potentially mm -hmm. purchase that home um, or that listing. So I think it really comes down to as realtors, us educating ourselves on what the actual requirements are for a home to go VA or mm -hmm. not go VA um, and put that in there as an option. You know, even if it says conventional only and I have a VA buyer, if they like that, we'll go look at it to see, you know, mm -hmm. what are the requirements? Is it something that we can work around to get this home to pass and go VA? Um, I think really goes a long way, but it's a little bit of legwork on everybody's part to make that happen ultimately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, a guy has a VA, a gal guy has a VA loan on a home. Um, what are some of the benefits for them when they own it and then they're trying to sell it? When they're trying to sell it, the nice thing about the VA loan is it's assumable by another veteran. So if interest rates continue to rise and we get to see ridiculous interest rates, they have that step up on a lot of other sellers where they uh -huh. can actually assume their loan at the interest rate, transfer everything over and cash out, which is a nice option. Right. So um, other than that, the requirements, the home, um, if it if they purchased it VA three years ago, chances are it can still go VA today. Right. So you open it up to a bunch of different buyers at that point and you have a broad market of buyers coming to look at your home. So. Yeah. What's the, you know, in terms of them, you know, like in our area, some of them are getting stationed at Fairchild and, uh, you know, here for three years. Is it worth them buying a home and, and being in it for three years and then having to sell? Or, or what would you suggest to those people coming our way um, to be stationed at Fairchild and, and uh, in terms of should they buy or should they rent? I actually deal with this a lot. Um, I do a lot of relocation business from military members transferring from all over the U.S. to Spokane. So um, base housing is limited right now um, with what they have as far as NCO housing, general population housing, stuff like that. So they're really limited out there at the base. Um, rental prices in Spokane, the vacancy rate's really low. So rental prices are raising rapidly. I know um, out in Airway Heights, there's certain apartments complexes that'll sign you to a six month lease and then they won't allow you to sign another lease after that they just go month to month that way they can trend with the market and raise your rental rates as possible so when you're a military member and you're living off base you get what's called BAH the base housing allowance mm -hmm. so um, with the base housing allowance essentially they're giving you more money for rent so or to purchase a home when you have that added on to your base pay why not buy at that point and you can with home prices in Spokane they rose it nine and a half percent last year on average mm -hmm. for the average homeowner why wouldn't you buy and gain equity and then when you relocate I mean you put the house up for sale make some money on it um, and have that money to put down to pay off other bills or put it down on a house when you get to your other location the other thing we see with the Air Force versus out at Fairchild versus a lot of other bases is they're not necessarily here for only three years a lot of these jobs are technical jobs where they end up okay. staying in their field longer um, you know when I was in the Marine Corps very few of us we weren't allowed to live off base unless we were married we had to live in the barracks um, and if you lived off base they had tons of base housing available so nobody owned a home nobody in my unit owned a home 
um, when we were active duty and with deployment schedules, stuff like that. But with what I see at Fairchild is they tend to be here a little bit longer. So you're talking six years usually um, on an enlistment here or a stay at this duty station. They're not getting rotated out as often. Deployments are shorter now or they're only seeing three month deployments. So they're not moving out of an apartment or selling to go on a deployment for a year most of those deployments are shortened to three months so it's a big benefit to purchase and make that equity up when you sell